bienvenue à, 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 au séminaire de, euh, 2000, de, de 2021. C'est professeur Tadiro Taniguchi, qui est professeur d'intelligence humaine et informatique à l'université de Ritsumekan à Kyoto, chercheur en chef général invité à la division de technologie de Panasonic en plus. Ses recherches portent sur l'intelligence artificielle, l'émergence de symboles en robotique, l'apprentissage automatique et les sciences cognitives. Il a été dernièrement à Montréal à l'UCAM en 2015 et il collabore avec le professeur Angelo Cangelosi de l'Université de Manchester qui a déjà assisté dans cette série de séminaires et qui sera, j'espère, un de nos conférenciers l'année prochaine. Euh, professeur Taneguchi a aussi collaboré à la traduction du livre de professeur Cangelosi. Tadehiro Taneguchi est un professeur of hum, human and computer intelligence at Ritsu Mekan University in Kyoto. He is also visiting general chief scientist in the technical division of Panasonic. And his research is on artificial intelligence, symbol emergence uh, in robotics, machine learning and cognitive science. He spoke in Montreal at UCAM in 2015 and has collaborated with Angelo Cangelosi of uh, University of Manchester and, and collaborated in the um, tra translation of his book. I hope Professor Cangelosi will be in our series next year. And now I welcome Professor Taniguchi who will be speaking. And if you have questions, you should put them in the chat and I will uh, discreetly inform Professor Taniguchi and he will decide whether that question should be answered right away or should be deferred until later for the question period. Welcome, Professor Taniguchi, bienvenue. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for very much for introducing me. And uh, thank you very much for, me, for inviting me as a speaker. So I'm Tadaguchi Taniguchi from Rizimeka University. And uh, it's my great honor to be given uh, this opportunity to present the, this talk the, in the, this online uh, seminar. So uh, today, uh, I'll be talking about a symbol emergence uh, in robotics, uh, probabilistic generative models for real world multimodal uh, language acquisition and understanding. Now, if you have any question, please don't hesitate uh, to ask via chat, okay? So maybe my pronunciation is too Japanese. So if you cannot catch uh, what I said, please don't hesitate to ask or check, confirm as well. Uh, so this is my uh, brief, uh, brief introduction of myself. So I'm working as a professor for uh, College of Information Science and Engineering in Rizumeka University, the, which is located nearby Kyoto in Japan. So I'm also uh, working for Panasonic as well. Uh, Panasonic is a home appliance company. Okay, they are now investing so much uh, to AI as well. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the topic the, of this talk. Oh, sorry, okay. So uh, we researchers in developmental and cognitive robotics are uh, interested in the computational understanding of human mental development. So actually, you know, a human child acquires so many physical skills, a concept and knowledge, including language uh, through physical and social interaction uh, with their environment. So, and just from their own experiences. The, from this uh, viewpoint, the, <clears throat> from, from the viewpoint of AI and robotics researchers, the learning capability of children is incredible. No? Uh, we would like to obtain an understanding of computational process of mental development and especially language acquisition. So it is essential to develop computational and robotic models uh, that can reproduce such process. 
So well, first, let me uh, show you some videos uh, to give some flavors the, of our studies. The, how can we uh, make a robot more cognitive and developmental based on its sensory motor experiences is a central question the, in cognitive and developmental robotics. Hero, uh, Hero, yeah. just let me ask you. Did, did you want to already share your screen? Because it's not sharing now. <gasps> already? Sorry, su super sorry. That's all right. <laughs> I, 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 oh, it's a fatal error. Can you, can you see my slide? Yes, yes, now that's fine. <laughs> wow, too bad. Sorry, sorry. So uh, that's a pre this is a previous slide, and this is my previous slide. <laughs> OK, sorry. Sorry for that. So uh, OK, anyway. Anyway, uh, please watch this video. Maybe that there's no big problem. Okay, so the okay uh, for the, this is a movie uh, I wanted to show. So the uh, in this case, in this sense, the of course the this field she has uh, many uh, challenges with AI and robotics community. So I will explain the detail. The, of some of them, some of this video at the later part of this lecture. Okay, so, so before starting, before I start talking, before uh, I start talking about the symbol emergency in robotics and developmental robotics, uh, let me exp let me uh, introduce, let me explain the kind of, kind of the broad <laughs> sense broad sense of the. Uh, AI. So, of course, many of you may know that recently, uh, during this decade, artificial intelligence made huge success uh, in many tasks. No, so for example, AlphaGo uh, beat a human Go champion, and self-driving car ran autonomously, and many kinds of elemental theories uh, contributed to success. So, uh, but. Uh, Please uh, let me revisit the fundamental question: the what's AI and what's current AI technology? First, I'd like to give a very brief introduction the, of the current notion of the AI, the many parts of AI current. So, so in the current hype of AI, intelligence uh, tend to be regarded as a function or mapping. So the, for example, the visual recognition system receive image data. And uh, it, uh, say, uh, it map the image data to label data. This is image recognition. And the automatic, automatic speech recognition system takes speech signal and it uh, map uh, the speech signals to the, the transcribed data, transcription. And for example, machine translation system, take for example, English text and map it to the uh, Japanese text or French text, for example. So this kind of the function uh, type of view that can explain many parts of the current AI technologies. Then actually deep learning arrived and by, uh, by using the deep learning architecture and uh, optimi by optimizing the parameter, huge parameters of the uh, neural networks, the, we can create uh, some sort of the, the pattern processing function. So this, is, this type of machine learning approach is often called end-to-end -end learning. So because it can optimize from an end to another end. Then the later, of course, the more complex functions have been explored and developed, so that uh, the we can uh, the in in this uh, uh, say so so but uh, but uh, we can ask the, this question: so is this a natural process of our cognitive cognitive development, or is the intelligence just a function? So they can be. Uh, they can be regarded as a function uh, to some extent. But I think uh, we need to uh, reframe the notion of intelligence or a cognitive system to further uh, development 
of AI. So, <clears throat> so actually, the, our society made a huge progress in AI. But uh, uh, AI, from this viewpoint, AI technologies, uh, AI society is still the regarding as an intelligence as a single function, single purpose function, and very task oriented. And it can be said the intelligence as a procedure and no autonomy. But when we look at the ch children, so they are not, their intelligence is not for a uh, single uh, task oriented. And actually the developmental process is some sort of the self-organization uh, of the sensory information flow and they have autonomy. So this kind of uh, uh, the, this kind of idea the, is echoing the predictive coding or and the free energy principle pre proposed by Carl Friston, for example. So, and actually such a bottom-up self-organizational learning process the reason, reason to not only acquisition of physical skill, but also the language, linguistic skill, language acquisition as well. So, uh, okay. So one of the main goal of this talk is to introduce a simple emergence in, in robotics. Here, I'd like to give a flavor of a research of uh, our here. So it is a bit old research I conducted about uh, almost uh, 10 years ago. Uh, a robot moves around and grabs an object, grasp an object the several times to obtain a haptic information and uh, it obtained, uh, it, it, again, it shakes the object and to get, uh, uh, to get uh, auditory information and looks at the object to obtain visual information. So the robot obtained the multimodal information, the haptic, the visual and the auditory information. So the, after that, the robot the uh, the robot the use uh, uses the unsupervised learning method the to integrate the multimodal sensory information the multimodal latent digital allocation this is a kind of the unsupervised multimodal unsupervised machine learning method that was used the for the unsupervised object categorization the task okay so the, the, I skip the detail of the method, but uh, uh, this is an example of the categorization result. The categorization results the shows the robot could uh, obtain that could form the, some sorts of categories uh, very similar to the most of the human participants. The wizard, yeah. Could I ask a question? And it'll, yeah, the, the it's a good time for a pause. Is this still unsupervised learning? Yes, basically, the, from the uh, viewpoint of the in machine learning terminology, the from by using uh, just the input or sensor information is just a haptic and visual and uh, auditory information. There is what, no supervision. Yeah. And what is the demonstration that they have got the category? I mean, normally we think that to get a category, you have to be able to try do trial and error and get feedback on whether you're right or wrong. But in unsupervised mm -hmm. learning, you don't have that. So what, how, do they, how do you know they have a category? Oh, that's a good, nice, that's a good question. And basically the, we, we gave label here, but it's not, uh, it's not given to the robot. And this is given, this, these are given the, by the, by the how say, human translator, human interpreter later. The basically the robot can form, uh, let's say, the robot have, uh, here robot have latent variables. So for each, let's say, uh, let's say the, the, please, please see the, this, this is a kind of image. So the, the, in this, the learning system, the robot has, have several, the latent variables. So the some, some observations uh, is allocated 
to uh, one variable. So the 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 how say by looking at this this the variable, the we can try we can interpret that a robot uh, this robot regarded regards the this object and this object are same or something like that. Can, okay? I, can I just pursue just a little bit more so I know what you mean by we know that it regarded as the same. What it has been receiving is mm -hmm. input without labels, without yeah, reinforcement, right. without feedback. And that's whatever right. it learns, even using its latent variables, whatever it learns mm -hmm. is based on the distributional and correlational structure of its input. That's is right. That that's right. And That's on right. the basis on the basis of that, mm. what is there in the input to show that it's doing categorization according to your labeling? Uh, you mean the what, what is the the how say the actual input of the, uh, the sensor information? You mean more? It's more. It's more. What? Uh, where in the output do you do you? Uh, draw the conclusion mm -hmm. that the system is categorizing in this way according to these labels. Uh, you point to the latent variables, but that's that's just part of the correlational structure. That's right. That's right. Uh, and I'm asking how it comes out in the output of what the, I mean. Your robots that you showed were actually doing things, right? Uh -huh. With with objects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how does this how does this translate into what it does in the world? What it does in the world? How how does this kind of learning uh -huh. uh, turn into or develop into what the robot can do in the world? Because in the world, you know, we can categorize stuffed animals. We do something different with stuffed animals, and something different with toy vegetables, and something different. Ah, uh, okay, okay. The, the, you mean there? How the robot can use this kind of category? Yes. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So, so this this research is uh, somehow the, at the preliminary stage. So in this experiment, the what robot can can uh, could do is just uh, finding a kind of the correlational structure. And uh, and uh, let's say so the the robot can differentiate the this uh, object and this object are different. Or this this object and this object are similar, or that uh, what the robot could do, and uh, maybe so that it's uh, still a bit far from the human categorization, because categorization is not similarity judgment. You're talking mm -hmm. about similarity judgment. I can see clearly how correlations would lead to the ability to say this is more similar to that. Than to that, but I don't see so clearly how it tells a robot you can do this with this and you can do that with that. Uh, related to actions. Yes. Oh. And that's why I asked if it was if there was any supervised learning or reinforcement learning or still just unsupervised learning. Uh, <clears throat> basically, the the this uh, example that this kind of movement. Yeah, actually implemented. So this kind of behavior is not trained. So the I'll say the the yeah we we introduce some sort of a trick about the behavior. So the yeah. So I know this, this is, yeah, that's the kind of limitation of the, this work. So can I continue? You can always continue, of course. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, 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 okay. So <laughs> okay, so let me move on. That's the kind of the study the uh, ten years ago conducted ten years ago. So that I I uh, I want to gradually move forward. I want to move forward. So uh, let me move on to the language acquisition problem. So the similar problem that can be found in the speech recognition system and the speech synthesis system. That for example, in the very ordinary approach the of artificial intelligence. The, when we when we develop the speech the speech recognition system, we pre prepare the bunch of speech signals and uh, transcribe the data. And uh, if you uh, say train 
the speech recognition system using the this kind of pair that you can train the speech recognition system. And the speech synthesis system is, uh, is also trained the, by creating the function that can map the, that maps trans, transcription to speech signals. But uh, when we look at uh, our children, uh, there is uh, no transcription data the, before he, uh, before he or she the, become able to uh, speak or understand a language. So, <clears throat> so uh, children that take speech signals and found some structure inside of their brain and uh, uh, produce the uh, utterances. Okay, so without any transcribed data. So, so this is a huge difference uh, between the current AI and uh, human language acquisition. So considering the language development of infants, the <clears throat> let me take an example uh, called example called word discovery. So in language acquisition, word discovery or word segmentation is a critical task for infant. That when parents speak to their children, they rarely use isolated words, but use uh, continuous or uh, continuous word sequence. So therefore, word segmentation is a primary task of language acquisition by children. So they have to perform word segmentation without pre-existing knowledge of vocabulary and even phonetic system, because children do not know lists of words and phonemes before they learn. Uh, they don't have access to transcription as well. So then what kind of assumption can we use for speech signals to perform unsupervised word discovery? So in our research, uh, we focused on double articulation structure. This is very simple structure. And actually the every language all over the world have this kind of double articulation structure. So the speech signal is basically continuous and how dimensional time series data and the spoken sentences is considered as a sequence of phonemes. The phonemes are groups into words and the people tend to give them meanings. This kind of two layer hierarchy, hierarchy is very general. And based on this kind of very, very basic assumption, uh, we uh, proposed the hierarchical, hierarchical the, the Bayesian model. That we developed the probabilistic general model for time series data having double articulation structure uh, that is assumed to be embedded in every language all over the world. So uh, this is a graphical model, but um, this might be might look very complicated, but the idea is very simple. So this is just a probabilistic model. So this L means, uh, means uh, sequence of phoneme, and this Z means a sequence of words. So there is a two layer hierarchy. And uh, uh, okay, and uh, the, by, by using Bayesian inference, uh, inference, the system can infer the all of the latent variables, the word sequence, phoneme sequence, the list of phonemes and the list of words from just from speech signals. So this is this is the illustrative figure of the target program and our approach. The robot, the system takes continuous speech signals and acoustic model. This is a kind of the phoneme, the knowledge of phonemes and the language model. This is a, the this is a kind of the knowledge of words. Uh, both of them are estimated, the inferred the from the space signal. Uh, okay, so the, <laughs> let me skip the, the detail of the result, but uh, we showed that our method, this method uh, can, found, can find the words and the phoneme just from the sensor signals. 
uh, speech signals. And uh, this, uh, the, so I say, for, for some but simple data set that, that was competitive uh, to the current or sort of conventional the speech recognition system. But, uh, you know, the finding words and phone name the from speech signal alone is still challenging and a problem. And I don't think the language acquisition, acquisition just from speech signal that is not so reasonable one. So, uh, so we uh, go further, we went further. So the, actually the uh, developmental psychologist said the people use, children use many kinds of, several kinds of cues for performing the word discovery. The one, uh, there are three representatives, the prosodic cues, distributional cues, and the co-occurrence cues. The here, uh, let's focus on the co-occurrence cues. So to detect, uh, say, <clears throat> so uh, when a person talks to a robot showing an apple, for example, the probability that the sentence contains a word about uh, Apple is, will be high. So if a, long, if a robot can make use of such information, the co-occurrence cues, the performance of word segmentation or word discovery uh, will increase. So the, however, to detect the co-occurrence of an object and the phrase, the robot has to form the category of the object beforehand or simultaneously. The how can robot form object category without knowing the names of object? So, because the robot is now performing the word discovery. So uh, one of the solutions is multimodal multi object categorization that I introduced uh, in, the, in the previous uh, talk. So this is, a, this is a kind of the picture the, uh, about the simultaneous acquisition of words unit, the multimodal object categories. You know, uh, this is the uh, uh, this is the uh, image uh, captured from the captured from the previous video, and uh, we proposed the this kind of graphical model that looks complicated as well. But uh, basically, the, we combined the multimodal cat categorization, the method, and the word discovery system, speech recognition method. So, and uh, the, the object categorization system and the speech recognition system, the word discovery system, are, are trained, optimized uh, at the same time in an iterative manner, okay? So the <clears throat> okay, so this slide gives us an overview of the experiment, uh, showing some image, the okay, so showing some of the experimental condition and the result. So and it shows that uh, both object categorization, object categorization, and the speech recognition, the performance uh, improved. The using the co-occurrence cues, uh, co-occurrence cues. Yeah, actually, the the by using the multi, multi by using the object category information, the word discovery performance is improved. And actually, the, if the if the uh, proper if proper was 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 can be found, such kind of information can be used for multimodal categorization as well. So the they helps each other, help each other. Okay, this is another the work of us. And later, they actually the <clears throat> what's uh, important for the robot uh, that live the together with us and provide services to us is not just an object category uh, and the lex lexical knowledge. The, for example, the in the service environment. The please go to the kitchen. If if I if we ask a robot, please go to the kitchen and bring me a bottle or something like that. This such kind of command is very popular, 
And you can find that the not only object, but also place name that is uttered, that is spoken by the, by the users. The, so the, some sort of place category or knowledge of uh, spaces are very important. So the, we, uh, <clears throat> to, to tackle this problem, the, we developed the machine learning method called uh, SPCOSRAM. Uh, this is a kind of on, online special concept acquisition method. So this method can form, map, and find a cluster of positions and discover words representing places from speech signals simultaneously by integrating multi multimodal information. So actually, the, when we think about the, what's the What's the kitchen, for example, for the robot or for us? So in ordinary approach of robotics, the robot that recognizes its position as a kind of X, Y coordinate. So the kitchen will be a some part on the map. But uh, for us, the, when we visit uh, my friend's home, we can easily, easily find, oh, it's a kitchen or a kitchen is there. So because there is a refrigerator and there is a microwave and so on. Such kind of the visual information or some human's behavior that can tell us the where is that kitchen. And so the, the actually this tells us uh, the press knowledge or press concept is, a, is also based on multimodal information. So this is uh, again the, some sort of the diagram the, of, the, uh, of this model. So the, <clears throat> the sports RAM uh, estimates the map and uh, self robot, robot self location. And at the same time, the robot forms a cluster of a category of the positions and uh, run at what the final words as well. So this is again a bit, a bit uh, complicated model, but uh, let me explain the briefly that this part, the upper part representing uh, the graphical model, generative model for SLAM, the mapping and localization. And this part, the red part is representing some clustering method for positions. And the blue part is representing the image recognition system. And this part, is a speech recognition system, the including word, word, word discovery. So these cognitive modules are integrated the, through this uh, integrative generative model, probabilistic generative model. And uh, this is uh, a video of experiment. So the robot uh, move around the, in the building and time to time, a person is talked to the robot, or oh, you are walking around, walking on the corridor, or you are visiting the toilet, or you are now in the coffee room, and so on. So by receiving this is a speech, this kind of speech signals, the robot finds words. So without any pre-existing pre the linguistic knowledge, and what I uh, said, the lexical knowledge, and at the same time, the robot form this kind of maps and uh, estimate its position and uh, find the cluster, cluster of the uh, position the, by integrating the image information and uh, su such kind of the linguistic information and the positional information. So, and uh, I know that uh, this is a, the just, a, just a clustering the, of the multimodal information, but uh, this, uh, I think that this, this uh, will be able to be used, used the, for further the tasks, okay? But uh, interestingly, so while I, we are conducting this kind of research, uh, we face the problem. So the, actually we want to uh, introduce this kind of technology to the service robot, like a vacuum, automatic vacuum cleaner and so on. So, but uh, when robots become so adaptive and learnable and they become able to obtain new knowledge automatically, we face the new problem. 
from the viewpoint of human robot interaction. So uh, in service robots. So it becomes hard for us to know what the robot is recognizing and what the robot is planning and, and so on. To tackle uh, this problem, we introduced a mixed reality technology recently. Okay. So this is not about the study of developmental robotics, but uh, 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 sorry for the Japanese text, but uh, this shows by using the AR, mixed reality device, so the, what robot is uh, thinking uh, can be uh, shown the, on the real world environment virtually, okay? So the, the, oh, now the robot, the user can see, oh, robot thinks, robot considers here kitchen and the, the, the robot is recognizing this is a sofa and so on. So we, if we can understand uh, the robot's recognition state that in this way, that will help the human robot interaction. Okay, so, so this is a video. Uh, this kind of a system is also, was also introduced uh, to the robotic convection environment. Oops, uh, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry for stopping. And actually the, in my, my side, in my side, the very loud sound was uh, uh, happen, happening, sorry. And uh, so as a showcase, we implemented uh, some of our technologies uh, to the, this kind of uh, robotics competition. Uh, this is a World Robot Summit uh, 2018. The, actually, the two, World Robot Summit is a kind of a robot Olympic the planned organized by Japanese government. And actually, the World Robot Summit uh, has, uh, should have been uh, organized last year, 2020, along with the uh, Tokyo Olympic. But, uh, uh, but, uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, that was extended uh, from, that was postponed uh, because of the COVID-19. So, and actually that uh, we got the first prize in this event. Okay, so this was uh, just uh, application. So we, I have the 10 more minutes, uh, five more minutes, okay. So, okay, so let's, be, let's revisit the, this model. Okay, so okay. Uh, by by developing this kind of the uh, integrated. Can, can, can yeah. I make a suggestion? This would be an excellent time for me to ask if there are people that have burning questions in order to be able to understand what's going on now. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. So uh, could you for, for um, if you're if you have a question to ask, turn on your microphone and speak aloud because wow, it's so many hard. questions, Kevin. You don't have to read them. I, I, I'll ask the. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'll ask the person who wants to ask the question to say okay. it out loud slowly, because they're explaining to people who speak two other languages. Okay, so pretty. Yeah. For example, Tufik, do you want to say something? Uh, non, merci. Uh, C'était juste un commentaire par rapport à, à votre intervention. Uh, uh, D'accord, c'est bon. Um, Pierre, do you have something to say? Pierre? Yes, I'm there. Okay. Uh, make it, but, but make it short because this is just a pause. Go ahead. Okay. The, the thing is uh, really what is required before you can start uh, training your robot. What do you have to load into your system? In other words, I will call this, what is innate into your robot? Like you use uh, <clears throat> phonemes for the, uh, the speech uh, uh, elements. Uh, how 
And I find this already a major improvement over using words because phonemes don't have any uh, semantic uh, mm -hmm. load. Uh, but still, it has to be parsed by the system before you can use the phonemes into your, uh, your robot. So what do you have to load into your system to separate the, pho the phonemes like this from the other sounds. Like there's all kinds of sounds outside. Uh, uh, how do you load it in there? Because okay, okay, this okay. is already some semantic. Okay, okay, okay. And I also have, the, uh, also have questions Thank about you. depth or distance. For the mapping, the, the robot has to move from one place to another uh, mm -hmm. to discover the distance between where it was and where it is now. But mm -hmm. that distance, how do you translate it into a world model? Because it's, at the beginning, it's only uh, a robot with aware of that. It is only aware of that distance. And how do you put this together into the mapping? OK, OK. That, OK, that please. <laughs> Very great. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. But let go. Let uh, let Tadahiro answer now, and we'll go to questions much later. Go ahead, Tadahiro. Can I? Yes. Yeah. Thank you for the great question, and you take a very nice point. Great point. And uh, actually, the for example, this system, the this system, I I said that this system could find the phoneme and the words simultaneously. So, but uh, yeah, the, actually this, and when we tested that, when we tested this system, we just put the human speech signals that separatedly from the other environmental sound. So that's a spot point. And actually the, the uh, human children that should distinguish the human voice, human speech from environmental signal. And if we put the environmental signals the, to this system at the same time, the system cannot work. So that, that's, yeah, of course, we still have such kind of challenge. And in addition, but uh, the, uh, what we give to the, this system is not a phoneme sequence, but a, a kind of the spectrogram, spectral the sequence. So the, the, there are many uh, kinds of phonemes that the, but the robot, that this system can automatically find the cluster of sounds and I mean the, uh, I say the phoneme. Okay, so the, the number of phonemes uh, well, are also uh, be estimated, are also estimated automatically basically. And uh, about the, this mapping, Yes, so the you take you are taking a very good point, actually. The uh, robot robot can form this kind of map. That yes, the, this kind this system is basically the based on SLAM. The SLAM is very standard approach in robotics for mapping, but uh, the the this this method uh, is uh, <clears throat> is this method uses the odometry information. That is a kind of the, the forward model or, or sensor, uh, how to say, the, the interpretation of the sensor signal as well. So such kind of very, how to say, the pre-existing knowledge the, of the objective coordinate is given. So from the viewpoint of the human development, the, it's, uh, how to say, it's not reasonable. Actually, that, actually, I want to throw away such kind of assumptions. So actually, recently, uh, during this uh, two or three or four years, so the people, people in machine learning community and deep learning community is looking at uh, world model. The world model approach uh, does not assume such kind of uh, uh, automatic information for building uh, environmental uh, model. So we are very much interested in such kind of approach. And we are now moving uh, to such kind of approach as well. Is it? Uh, yes, that's a very, good, it's a very good answer. And 
you can <laughs> you can go on now. If it comes up again, it'll come in at the end. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. So the later part is about uh, cognitive, uh, much more than a cognitive architecture. And uh, okay, okay, maybe time is. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, don't don't, don't uh, worry about the time because you you're, 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 you're don't worry about the time because you're mixing uh, your talk and the okay. questions and the questions. Great, 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 great. So maybe that you got the, some sort of flavor or tendency of our approach now. So actually, that we have been developing uh, this kind of uh, about the complex the system, not only a single function, but also the uh, the kind of combined integrated system. So this is just an example. That in addition to this, uh, we developed the, this kind of the kind of hierarchical uh, multimodal categorization system. And this this is this is a press concept formation method. And this is uh, the simultaneous word, dis word discovery and uh, uh, object categorization. So. So when we look at uh, these models in detail, so we find we found that uh, oh most of them are just a kind of the integration combination of the kind of elemental the cognitive modules represented by the probabilistic genetic model that is for the unsupervised learning. But uh, this is a uh, three combination of three MLDA modules. And this is uh, just a combination of the speech recognition system, that in, including the word discovery, and uh, MLDA, multimodal categorization. And this model is a combination of SLAM and the Gaussian mixture model, and MLDA and the speech recognition, recognition system. But uh, all of them are integrated into a single uh, learning system. So, but uh, till now, till uh, before the, this paper, <laughs> this paper, so that our colleagues and our collaborators that build this kind of integrative system one by one. So it's very, how to say, costly. So uh, they, after noticing uh, this point, uh, we developed a new framework uh, for developing this kind of uh, integrative model, okay? So actually, the, the, these are graphical models, and uh, these graphical models can be combined uh, via single node. And uh, if we can, then actually the, the, we uh, developed a way to combine the different uh, graphical model. And you know, the, uh, if you open the basic text of the machine learning, uh, you, the many uh, textbooks show that there are the three types of connections the, in graphical model, the, the generative models. And uh, the, we prepared three ways of communication method between the two uh, modules, two modules. So by, by following this, kind, this uh, protocol, the, the, the separated, the two, two separated modules can be, can be optimized, can, can learn simultaneously in the same way as the integrated model. So this can help us and uh, this can accelerate the, our development of this kind of the, the integrative the cognitive system. We call this, uh, approach, Serketo, yeah. Okay, so th this is uh, just an example, my toy example. And uh, uh, this is an integrative uh, graphical model, graphic uh, data model. The task is a simultaneous uh, categorization of the speech signal representing numbers and uh, uh, image of numbers. So, but the uh, point is that the, uh, there are four very heterogeneous modules. We have very heterogeneous modules. The Gaussian mixture model, variational autoencoder, and latent DHA allocation. This is for clustering and automatic speech recognition systems. So, but uh, we can 
uh, let them work and learn together by using uh, this, this framework, circuit framework. So we showed that uh, the, uh, when we train the VAE, GMM, LDA, ASR one by one, the performance is very limited, crossing performance. But uh, if we connect them and run together, the crossing performance was improved. So this kind of the uh, integration of uh, cognitive modules and uh, how say the let them run together. It's very important, I think. So so lastly, the, finally, the, yeah, I'm now approaching to the conclusion. But uh, the somebody asked me, why are you so focusing on the basic graphical generative model? So uh, that's, a, that's a nice good question. So from machine learning viewpoint, modeling cognitive system with probabilistic genetic models uh, and their inference the, is a very general view. The actually, the, from the viewpoint of the probabilistic model, the, what supervised learning is doing is to model the posterior distribution the conditioned by the observation, PY given X. And unsupervised learning, the especially multimodal unsupervised learning, the, is modeling the joint distribution the, over several variables, X and P, X and Y. And if we have the, this joint distribution, actually the PY given X, the posterior distribution can be calculated. Uh, if the, it satisfies some conditions, okay? And what, so, so how about reinforcement learning? Now, actually, uh, there is uh, the recently, the uh, reinforcement learning uh, is also regarded as uh, probabilistic modeling and uh, inference. So it becomes widely known that reinforcement learning can be reformulated as an inference on probabilistic graphical models. This concept is controlled as a probabilistic inference. So uh, Sergey Levin, Levine, Sergey Levine wrote a nice tutorial paper about this. And so the, this is very nice for us that actually that this is a graphical model as a postram again. So the, the reinforcement learning, the planning, can be reinterpreted the, as an inference on the probabilistic genetic model, then actually the, uh, this, kind of, uh, I, this, this kind of idea uh, give us further, I'll say, uh, further development of the planning, planning method for the for, uh, special concept formation. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And uh, actually, the, for example, the robot, the, after obtaining the special concept, uh, so-called special concept, the robot can understand, for example, the, the where is the toilet. The, the, if the robot hears the sound of the toilet, the, the robot can infer the position of the toilet as a posterior distribution. And uh, by using such kind of information, the robot can infer the uh, path to the toilet just uh, uh, through the Bayesian inference on this probabilistic genetic model. And such kind of inference is uh, mathematically same as the reinforcement learning. That's a very important point. And uh, actually, the, what I want to say is these uh, ideas can be, uh, say, uh, can be represented uh, I, in, on the genetic model. Can I accept a question? Yeah. Um, I have a problem with this uh, assumption that reinforcement learning uh, can be formulated as, as a probabilistic inference system. Mm -hmm. um, the, the problem is that probabilities usually deal with means and reinforcement learning aims mm -hmm. to acquire expertise. So how, how do you distinguish between the two? 
I mean, how, how can you get precise behavior out of a probabilistic approach? Uh, maybe I couldn't uh, get the point or I couldn't catch or... Oh, that's fine, okay. Just at the X, uh, you mean the probabilistic modeling uh, is uh, a that, set? Yeah, hmm. th that would provide decisions, inferences mm -hmm. that are true on average. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Maybe, maybe I could get true get... precisely on specific. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Maybe I, I could, uh, I could get your point. Okay, okay, okay. So the, the basically that's a very interesting point. The and uh, this paper, this tutorial paper, that will give you a very nice introduction to that. Actually, the uh, when we formalize the uh, reinforcement learning as a inference, uh, say, as a probabilistic inference, it's called control as inference we need to introduce, basically, we need to introduce an additional variable. It's called optimality, optimality variable. So what's the, what's the, this approach, what this approach do, does is to infer the future trajectory or future control signal. So uh, under the condition that, uh, that the, the future the how say the future the optimal opti, optimality variable that means that the behavior is optimal is observed so that how say okay i get you mm, so that, basically yeah. you're turning the problem into a, an optimization one that's fine. that's right that's right that's right yeah 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 so the point is that inference is very much related to opt optimization so the optimization can be uh, reinterpreted as an inference. Okay, that's fine. Mm, that's the point. Okay, so uh, these are maybe almost time is up. So uh, that's almost uh, all for today. But finally, let me introduce some uh, survey papers. The we are uh, researchers in AI cognitive AI cognitive science developmental robotics and neuroscientists that cognitively wrote a paper about the simple emergence in cognitive systems. And uh, the, also the, today, I, my title involves the language, but uh, I, I didn't, I think I didn't uh, uh, talk so much about the language, but uh, actually, but uh, uh, studying language from the viewpoint of robot is very important. Actually, ro robot, is embodied systems behaving in this world. So actually natural language processing people uh, tend to look at the text information only. So they're extending such kind of idea and the language uh, in daily, studying the language in daily use the, with physical and social system is very important. So the, uh, we called, uh, we wrote a paper about the challenges in the language and robotics, Serbian frontiers of language and robotics as well. So that we, I talked, I talked about the, the kind of integrative cognitive system. Yes, the, the, our brain system is, you know, the integrating so many the modalities and functions. So another, uh, how say, another approach uh, is to develop such kind of integrative cognitive system, uh, learning by learning the human brain structure. So it's also another challenge. Uh, and uh, we actually the, the published the preprint that on Mo Monday or Tuesday this week, that with the collaboration of the neuroscientist people. Yeah, so that's another advertisement as well. So uh, that's all for today. So yeah, I welcome the questions. Thank you very much.